Move on now to the Board of Education, which has had its own share of drama recently as well. The levy did pass convincingly yesterday by 12 points, as I rem if I remember my stats uh, here. Melissa Power and Michael Martin were up for re-election. Both won. Melissa Power joins us right now. Good morning, Melissa. Congratulations. Good morning, Rob. Thank you for having me on this morning. And along with the judicial, judicial races, uh, the BOE positions last night were decided in the election last night. There is no need to move on to November to uh, contest in the general. It's a nonpartisan race. So, Melissa, uh, the term you, are, uh, you have been reelected to will last for how many years? Four years. Four years. Very good. So what do you read in to the reelection of both you and Michael Martin and the passage of the levy, despite the problems that recently uh, uh, sprang up at uh, North Middle? Yeah, so the last two years, we, there's really been an era of change that has occurred, not just uh, within the, the you know, Board of Education elected officials, um, but also throughout the entire school system. I don't know how many times I would walk into schools and be introduced to, to different staff members, and the thing that I heard the most was that, that they felt there was an air of change. The, the school board members were active in the schools. They were listening to, to those who were working directly with kids and that they felt that finally for the first time in a long time they felt like somebody was actually listening to them. They understand that there's change um, occurring and that unfortunately it is a slow process, but um, I believe especially with everything that's been happening in the last uh, week or so, you you see that there is a Board of Education for Berkeley County that is, you know, at this point, we're, we're, we're taking notes, we're taking names, and we're trying to figure out and get to the bottom of what is not working in our county and trying to figure out what does that mean for fixing it. Did you get any blowback, Melissa, from your appearance on this show a couple of days ago? You were strikingly honest, despite the fact that you were up for re-election, and so was the levy. Yeah, it's interesting because the, the, the first 24 hours, I actually got a lot of criticism. You know, how could you be on the board and not know? And, you know, I didn't respond. I, I kept quiet because at the, you know, I can respond to anything. Anybody knows that. Uh, I opened my mouth. But um, <laughs> one of the things that, that I was struck with was how much people were not aware of what was going on. And I, I had to take that step back and go, okay, not only do we not know what's going on because of information that we just don't have access to to, to um, um, have accountability for what we're being told, but then the general public, um, the community at large, has an understanding that we should know, and this is, and, and, and not, I'm not arguing that, w that we should or shouldn't, I'm just saying there was this understanding that there was a lot more control, and I think, um, you know, Mr. Stubblefield and, and um, uh, Mr. Gilstrap said it, it, it very well after my interview, which was they thought that there was more control than what there is, and that was alarming to them. And, 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 and I agree, and I think that was one of the startling things that I had come to when I joined the Board of Education. So it's, I did not receive any blowback after that. In fact, all the negativity <laughs> stopped. So um, I was very thankful that I was able to come on uh, the show, literally clear the air, um, and and set everything straight to to show, hey, look, I'm I'm mad, just along, you know, right along with you guys, and we there's we need to fix this. So, yeah, Melissa, uh, after the last several days, mm -hmm. I come away very confused about the role of the Board of Education and the need of a local Board of Education. Yeah. Let me clarify these points. Uh, mm -hmm. One, I heard that the State Board basically uh, takes the charge of writing policy uh, or writing uh, or uh, uh, dictating uh, what's going to be done. Uh, the, the local board supervises one person, but that supervision does not extend beyond that one person, mm -hmm. uh, that there is very little in the way of you write policy but you have no real way of, re of enforcing the policy now whether or not this is true or not uh, this is the impression that I've had sure so I come away with a basic question is why what role does a local board of education play and what do we need to do to either strengthen the role of the local board of education or get rid of it well, those are those are very loaded questions, Mr. Stubblefield. Um, it's the only kind he asks, Melissa. I know, I know. I'm, I should be used to this. So, what I would say to to you is this: 
is there do we have local control yes up to a point um however we do have to work with the state board of education the state board of education and the department of education they are all rolled up in and they are very separate from legislation um you, you know you you heard several delegates um you know having conversations on your show and one of the things that's interesting that i actually drew from this is they can pass any legislation they want but they need the cooperation of the department of ed so my assertion is do we really need to um you go go to the heart of the issue which is if if there is a state that has no control over the education of the students and yet there's so many issues that are prevalent um not just in in our school district but in in multiple and i dare say that if you would ever go to um a school board association meeting where you have multiple you know counties sitting in the room you will see there's a common thread and a common theme in those you know in, in those meetings and i can absolutely tell you one of the biggest things that that is prevalent is there's this looming threat um that if you do something that the state does not like the state uh board of ed does not like they will come in and take over and there's there's that constant undertone that's there i i believe that the State Board of Ed should have elected members, not just appointed, and they shouldn't be there for nine years. Their terms are nine years, um, which I, I think is is a detriment to to our state because, you know, the, the county board is four years. So I, I could live two terms. I, I could have two terms, and I would live through one appointment of one individual. Um, I think that there's the ability to work with the the state board of ed um, or department of education, but there is a there is some tension. There is tension between the two, and um, I, I'd love to figure out how we can correct that without dismantling things. Um, because I don't I don't necessarily believe in dismantling. I don't believe in dismantling public schools. Um, I believe our public schools uh, can benefit our, our community greatly. We just have to figure out uh, what that actually looks like for local control and versus what that looks like for state. And then how do we hold people accountable? How are we actually holding this entity that is like a fourth branch of government accountable? Hi, Melissa. This is John. Congratulations. Hi, you, John. Actually, you actually chose to stick your face back into this propeller. Remember that. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, I did. Yes, I did. Um, you know, I don't mean to <laughs> I don't presume to tell you how to do your job or anything, nope. but, yep. but uh, if, we will. <laughs> if, if I were you, I think one of the things that really disturbs me about this whole situation is the element of surprise that yeah. everybody what this was going on we didn't how we didn't know and this mm -hmm. is what really shocks me and you know the board of education you have all those those people at winchester avenue is that where they just I, i've heard about the, the location yesterday have all these people doing important things and it seems to me that if if i were sitting in a corner office whoever's in charge um, everybody be doing school duty at some point. And I mean meaningful, wh whether it's once a month or whatever, you go yeah. out there and you get dirty and you go and yeah. you witness things. And I don't mean a tour where you go and, and Correct. It's, it's not a VIP thing. I mean, Correct. you go out there and actually get to know and see what's going on. So if nothing else... Maybe they don't mm -hmm. have the power to correct, but at least they see what's going on. So it's not some guy from Rich from Richmond from, from Charleston who's coming in and telling you stuff that's going on in your backyard. Correct. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. What I can tell you to that point specifically, we had a meeting on Monday night, and one of the things that I brought up, and then subsequently Mr. Murphy brought up, was specifically we are hearing from school teachers from administrators out in our county that literally the central office employees that are at Winchester Avenue or, you know, whoever is, is um, we have, we have a, a special education office that's, that's not located on Winchester Avenue. So they're, they're a separate office, but they're still considered part of that um, central office team. Um, they need to be out in the schools. And we express that, that when we hear from teachers and administrators that, yeah, they come in, but they're there for, five, you know, 5, 10, 15 minutes. They walk the halls and then, you know, wave in the classrooms, peek their head in for maybe a second, and then they're gone. Um, you know, we have stressed 
to um, Superintendent Stevens that this needed to, to be changed because this is what the experience was, and I guess somebody, I don't know who, was telling him completely different, so I can't say that what he was given was, was right information, um, but there is one of the things that I brought up was that's got to change, period. We have to get the individuals who are in the central office who haven't been in a classroom, mind you, for for a while. In some cases, um, some of these individuals have not been in a classroom for a number of years, so pre-COVID. Um, so the, the dynamic that is actually occurring in the classroom now, post-COVID, that is, that is different um, than what it was pre-COVID, they don't even have an understanding, honestly. They really do not have an understanding. And I would dare say, as someone who used to be in the classroom and working directly with students, you can sit in the office all you want until you actually come out of your ivory tower and come down and sit next to me and watch what I'm doing and what the interactions are and what is actually happening in the classroom and how I'm being disrespected and how I'm being hit, bit, kicked all that, you're never going to understand it. Um, I, had, I had one administrator when I worked in this public school system that would come in and would help all the time. And I think those administrators, that principal was amazing. And I think we need central office employees down there. I said it. Mr. Murphy said it. I would imagine some of the other board members would say it, but I will not speak for them. I'm 90 seconds left. I'll get Wayne Clark has a quick point to make. Wayne? Yes. Um, Melissa, th- I just want to thank you for for. Um, being on local school board uh, as a delegate and knowing that Amendment 4 failed a few years ago. Mm -hmm. um, We know that as a legislator, we don't have the oversight that we need um, to maybe fix some of these local issues or, or, but uh, what would you recommend for someone like myself who sits on the education committee to try and get done to help you? 40 seconds, Melissa. You have to be concise. <laughs> oh, golly. I mean, I have a list. Um, <laughs> Email um, first, it to me. <laughs> I, I Trust me, I, you and I, we will have a conversation, and I think I, it would be beneficial if, if you have conversations with several um, – um, um, area boards, um, not just in this area, but in multiple areas throughout the state, because you'll see a common thread. Um, one of the things I would say is we, we absolutely do need locality pay. I know we've talked about it. I know people say that it would be too hard to pass. Well, we, we need to reframe this. We need to look at this from a different perspective. If we don't need to, maybe we don't call it locality pay, um, but we need to be creative. We need to think outside the box. Um, the other thing is we need support from, from our legislation, from our attorney general, from our governor, from um, all of those entities that literally say if there's a disruptive student that is physically dangerous um, in our school system and in our schools, we have the right and the capability of removing that individual until we know that they are safe. Um, and they're not going to self-harm, they're not going to harm others. We need to have that confidence, and we need to give that confidence back to the teacher and to the principal. Um, and that, on, that on that note, Melissa, that, I, we have to. I do have, have to, to cut you off because I'm know deadly out that. of time. <laughs> hey, thank you so much. Appreciate your time this morning. Congratulations. Oh, thank you so much for having me, Rob. Congratulations. Back with the final few.